In today's video, we are going to be deriving the equation for centripetal acceleration. There are a number of derivations that are on our specification that you have to be able to do, and they're sort of standard. So this is the further mechanics one. It's specification point 109. We have to use vector diagrams to derive the equation, and then we have to understand how to use it. If you're doing international A-level, it is specification point 89. Okay, so when we put an object moving in a circle, we should know already from our study at GCSE that the object's velocity at any point is at a tangent to that circle. So if we were to label this object in the picture here as A, then although the object is moving around in a circle, its instantaneous velocity at that point is at a tangent, and that is given by V1. As the object moves through an angle around the circle, we'll call it delta theta, and it gets to position, call it position B, because it has moved around in a circle, and obviously there's something holding it in the circle, its velocity is now at a different tangent to the circle. So the idea is, is that we're going to use these velocities v1 and v2 to find out what the acceleration of the object is. There are a number of ways that you can derive this equation. I'm going to show you what I think is the most intuitive way and the most straightforward. So if we take the velocities that we saw in the previous diagram and we draw them into a vector diagram like this, we've got our v1, which is when the object was at position A, and there's our v2 uh, at position B, and there's the angle that it moved in between them. The change in velocity then goes from v1 to v2. So we end up with this triangle. This is not a right angle triangle. And in order to use our trigonometry equations, we would like it to be a right angle triangle. So we're going to make it so. In order to do that, we are going to put a line down the center here and make this a right angle triangle so that we can use sine theta and cos theta. And obviously what we've got now here is a second angle that is delta theta divided by 2. And the length of this side here is going to be delta v divided by 2. Now we can apply our trigonometry here. We can say that sine delta theta over 2 is equal to delta v over 2 divided by the original velocity. As this is a numerical value of that velocity, it can be either v1 or v2, so we'll just call it v. Now, in our original diagram, this one, our delta theta looked like a very large angle, but of course the same principle applies even if the angle is very small. So even if you were to draw your second velocity as being there, you would still have the same idea in that you have v1 and v2 and the delta v would, the vector diagram would look the same as we've seen below. So what we can say is, If we assume that delta theta was a small angle to start with, then we know that the small angle approximation rule applies. And the small angle approximation says that sine theta is approximately equal to theta, which effectively means we can get rid of the sine up here and rewrite this equation then as delta theta over 2 is equal to delta v over 2 divided by v. And of course, we're going to get rid of this awkward part in, in the second part of this equation and say, okay, delta theta over 2 then is equal to delta v over 2v. If we cross multiply that, then we get 2 delta v is equal to 2v delta theta. And of course, our 2s will cancel, leaving us with delta v is equal to v delta theta. The next step that we're going to do is we're going to divide across by t, giving us delta v over t is equal to v delta theta over t. And of course we should know that delta v over t is a, so that means that a is equal to v delta theta over t. And we should also know that delta theta over t is omega. So that means that a is equal to v omega. Since 
phi is equal to r omega. As we know from the previous video, you can uh, look at that video and find out why v is equal to r omega. And therefore, omega is equal to v over r. That means that we can substitute for either one of these. We have a being equal to r omega squared. If you substitute for v, or a is equal to v squared over r if you substitute for omega. And this is the one that is mentioned in our specification, but all of these are extremely useful in their own way. Make sure that you can do this derivation step by step, starting from the vector diagram. If we go back up to our vector diagram, this is the key here, because normally in an exam you'll be given the circle with the object moving around in the circle, and your job is going to be to establish the vector diagram and then from there to walk through the derivation. Our specification also mentions using these equations. So let's have a go. I'll do three questions as examples for you. You can find more examples uh, in my Patreon page. Uh, I walk through exam questions there as well. But meantime, let's have a look and see how do you do this. So a man stands at the Earth's equator. We want his angular velocity. That's omega. His linear speed. That's our v and his acceleration due to the rotation of the Earth, if that's the radius of the Earth. Right, angular velocity. We know from previous video that omega is equal to 2 pi over t. t, because it's the Earth that's rotating here, is going to be 24 hours. And of course, that's not a unit that we can use here, so we have to turn that into seconds. 24 times 60 times 60 which gives us 86,400 seconds. Now we can put that into our equation. 2 pi over 86,400. That gives us 7.27 times 10 to the minus 5 words per second. Part B. We know that B is equal to r omega. So we can say 6.4 times 10 to the 6 times our 7.27 times 10 to the minus 5. And that will give you 465 meters per second. And finally, C, our acceleration here. We've got a number of equations we can use if we again think back to our derivation. We've got r omega squared or we've got b squared over r. I'm going to go for r omega squared here because this is the numbers that we have most readily. Again, 6.4 times 10 to the 6 multiplied by our 7.27 times 10 to the minus 5 squared, and that gives us 0.034 meters per second squared. Again, this idea of choosing what equation you use, that's very much a personal choice. We know if we go back again, we have a is equal to v squared over r, a is equal to r omega squared, and a is equal to v omega. Depending on what you have available to you at the time, you get to choose. Question two, in the sport of hammer throwing, which is not actually a DIY hammer, it's a great big steel ball on a chain that the athlete whirls around, we whirl it in a circle of radius 1.9 meters at 2.4 revolutions per second. Now obviously that is not the standard unit for um, angular velocity, we're going to have to change that, but we want acceleration. Okay, so let's first of all turn this 2.4 revolutions per second into reds per second. So we know that we need our omega, so its omega is the revolutions per second in pies. So if we've got 2.4 revolutions per second, each one of those revolutions is 2 pi, and we need over t, which is 1 because it's per second, that's going to give us an omega of 15.08 reds per second. Okay, now we know that a is equal to 4 omega squared, which is equal to 1.9 times 15.08 squared, 
which is equal to 432 meters per second squared. Again, you can see the key here is identifying your variables. And this is a very good idea, is underline and just write in which variable you're given in the question. And that will help you identify what equation is going to be easiest for you to use. Final question three. A designer of a loop to loop ride wants to create an acceleration of 6g at the bottom of a loop of radius 8 meters. At what speed should the car be moving to create this acceleration? Okay, uh, we need that g, that acceleration, in numbers rather than 6g, so let's do that first. 6 times 9.81 giving us an acceleration of 58.86 meters per second squared. Okay, now we have our A, we have our R, and we want V. Again, we have a choice of equations, but let's go for A is equal to V squared over R. And if we rearrange that by cross-multiplying, we will get V squared is equal to A, R, which means V is equal to the square root of A, R. And now we just put our numbers in. That's going to be the square root of 58.86 times 8, giving us an answer of 21.7 meters per second. And that is how it's done. There are many, many more questions. And again, if you visit my Patreon page, I have notes, I have questions, uh, with solutions, I have past paper questions that I go through, I have extra videos for, depending on the tier of Patreon, I also will do Zoom calls, etc. So make sure you check it out, um, and I will see you in the next video.